inspiring triumphs. Straight Leadership, this is Philippine Biography, the program that thrives on rich details, seasoned with insider insights and observations. For a remarkable weekly dose of who's really who, check out this season's episode, Know Your Congressman. See and hear their triumphs and successes. Quezon City is bounded on the north by Caloocan and San Jose del Monte Bulacan, on the south by Pasig, Mandaluyong and San Juan, on the west by Manila, Caloocan and Valenzuela, and on the east by Rodriguez, San Mateo and Marikina. Based on official census of the National Statistics Office, Quezon City is the most populous local government unit in the country, with 2.17 million residents, or about 22% of Metro Manila. With 16.122 hectares of land area, it is the largest of Metro Manila cities. It covers almost one-fourth of the national capital region and five times bigger than the city of Manila. Sigaw sa Pugadlawin Monument, the People Power Monument, University of the Philippines, the Araneta Coliseum, Quezon Memorial Shrine, Ninoy Aquino Parks and Wildlife Center, the House of Representatives, and the La Mesa Echo Park. These are just among Quezon City's must-see places. The La Mesa Echo Park envisions a better environment for Filipino children. The La Mesa Watershed is 2,007 hectares, 700 hectares of which is the reservoir, and 2,000 hectares is the surrounding forest. This forest is the last remaining one of its size in Metro Manila and serves as its carbon dioxide sink. Inside the park is the La Mesa Echo Academy. Was there a time that you wished to spend class outside a classroom? Now you don't have to sit and feel sleepy while listening to an hour and a half lecture of ecology in class. Because inside the La Mesa Echo Park is the Echo Academy which brings learning outside the classroom. Congresswoman Mary Ann Susano asserted that attempts to showcase and save the environment must be supported and so she did not hesitate in sponsoring the construction of the multi-purpose hall. The said hall will be used as venue for Echo Academy in which students are provided lectures and hands-on activities for them to learn more about caring for the environment. Maganda itong ating plano, uh, yung ating park. Uh, yung academy, uh, i-spearhead natin, ibibigyan natin yung ating yung curriculum would be distributed in, in, in all the schools. Uh, we already talked to Justin Lapos and of course to our chair, chair uh, <laughs> secretary that we will, uh, it will be, maybe in the future, will be included in the curriculum. Quezon City's expansive lands combined with consumer market are immediate plus factors for business. All lines of business and all kinds of business activities gravitate toward this metropolitan enclave as a matter of course. According to the city's treasurer's office, there are more than 65,000 business establishments in Quezon City today. Finding it a cost-effective location are the business process outsourcing companies who find real estate values very competitive and areas available for business very expensive. Quezon City can be called the shopping mecca of the country where each of its 17 shopping malls sits center stage in practically every dense community cluster in the city. In these malls and throughout the city are a wide array of restaurants, more than 300 of which can fit your pleasure from fine dining to fast food. Its Timog area has gained a reputation as a restaurant row and Eastwood City is practically a dining village while hosting the largest cluster of call centers in the city. A fast-evolving reputation is that of being the wellness capital of the Philippines. In the country, Quezon City has the most number of hospitals with the biggest bed capacity. Among the 20 government and private hospitals here are the internationally known Philippine Heart Center, the National Kidney and Transplant Institute, the Philippine Lung Center, and the St. Luke's Medical Center. The medical facilities fit nicely into a dense complementary wellness cluster filled in by physical fitness centers, health clinics, alternative healing centers, spas, beauty and cosmetology centers, 
as well as medicine and medical equipment companies, which puts Quezon City well into the center of the health and medical tourism industry. Did you know that Quezon City is the former capital of the country? It was conceived by the former president of the Commonwealth of the Philippines, Manuel Luis Quezon. It became capital in 1948 through the Republic Act No. 333 and moved back to Manila in 1976. Manuel Quezon envisioned a place where the common man will find his home with dignity. Indeed, today, it is the paradise of the productive man. In a survey commissioned by the London Financial Times, Quezon City is included in the top 10 Asian cities of the future. It ranks 7th among 200 cities comparable with Hong Kong, Singapore and Taipei which were the top 3. In its 2008 report, the Asian Institute Management acknowledged the city of Quezon as one of the competitive cities in the country. It is in fact tagged as the richest city in the Philippines. Quezon City government has posted a tax collection of 10 billion pesos for the entire year of 2008. It exceeded the 2007 collection of 9.6 billion pesos and 2006 collection of 7.46 billion pesos. Business tax is the biggest contributor at 3.23 billion pesos, followed by real estate tax. Congresswoman Marianne Susano contributes half the amounts into the city coffer in terms of real estate, paying taxes for the century-old Susano market, which she inherited from her mother. Her family has also donated hectares of land that has benefited those who are in need and even the Quezon City government. For the record, business mogul Henry C. and his chain of giant malls and other business enterprises is the biggest taxpayer in Quezon City. Another Taipan national, John Gokong Wei, also contributes in terms of business and real estate taxes. A portion of the Robinson's Gallery at Ortigas Avenue rests on land within the jurisdiction of Quezon City. One of the biggest taxpayers is also Dr. Lu Shutan. Aside from owning valuable real estate properties, he also operates various business establishments including branches of the Allied Bank. The Aranetas, the pioneers in the establishment of business centers in the city, lorded over the business section of Cuba where many of the first-class shopping centers are located. Andrew Tan spearheaded the rise of Eastwood City, the newest business growth center in the metropolis, high-end condominiums, entertainment establishments, restaurants, and top-class stores can be found at this strip of land around Libis, which had become a favorite playground of the Yuppies. The entire length of Banawi Street is the trade center for the supplies of automotive spare parts and equipment. Similar establishments are sprouting along Aurora Boulevard and Araneta Avenue, including some busy streets of Novaliches. Novaliches, the biggest district in the city, is now a fast-developing economic zone. Banks and commercial establishments are cropping up along the broad and long corridors of Commonwealth Avenue. Quezon City is subdivided in 142 barangays. These barangays are grouped into four congressional districts. Each district has a representative in Congress. And from the biggest district in Quezon City is Congresswoman Marianne Susano. While no one will argue the fact that Mayor Feliciano Belmonte charted the roadmap to the financial stability of Quezon City, the major challenge now of the next mayor has to face is how to sustain or even surpass Belmonte's governance. Congresswoman Susano from 2nd District is willing to take that risk. When we come back, let's get up close and personal with her.